In 2022, From Software released a masterpiece in the form of a video game that undoubtedly revolutionized the Souls-like genre and the gaming world as a whole. As a huge fan of this game, I decided to play it once again after two years of achieving its platinum trophy to see if the experience would remain as magical as the first time. I can say that I was pleasantly surprised and delighted to play this masterpiece once more. Today, I will share with you why Elden Ring is an incredible game and worth every penny. I offer you an accord. Although the game's story is wonderful, it is not the main focus, as is the case with all Souls-like games. The story isn't told in a traditional linear manner, like in God of War, where you progress through story missions one by one until you reach the end. Due to this, the standout features are the spectacular gameplay and the meticulously crafted world with its intricate details. There are countless enemies and over 200 bosses of every imaginable type but only 13 are necessary to complete the game. Prepare yourself, as you will spend many hours exploring the vast map to achieve this challenging objective. The game drops you into the world without telling you where to go or what to do. You're given a horse named Torrent, and from there, it's just you, Torrent, and God. Named Torrent. To me, Elden Ring is the epitome of an open world game, standing alongside masterpieces like Red Dead Redemption 2, The Legend of Zelda, The Witcher 3, and the legendary The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. The world building in Elden Ring is simply marvelous. It encourages you to explore the map without forcing you to do so or overwhelming you with countless missions in a confusing menu, like the often criticized Ubisoft formula. In contrast to many modern games that create vast, empty worlds filled with meaningless activities just to pad playtime, Elden Ring crafts a massive, magnificent, and meticulously designed world that motivates you to seek out every piece of equipment, spell, enchantment, and armor the game has to offer. You open the map, spot a location, and wonder, what could be there? And when you arrive, you realize it's so much more than you ever imagined. This level of thought and detail put into the world, construction makes Elden Ring stand out among its peers, drawing players in and keeping them engaged throughout their journey. Elden Ring's incredible design is evident in its diverse regions, of which there are at least 10, including Limgrave, Liurnia of the Lakes, Caled, Lendel, and the Giant's Mountain, as well as subterranean maps like Syofra River and Ainsel River. There are also secret locations, each with its distinct culture, people, lighting, weapons, magic, and unique enemies. The developers must have spent countless sleepless nights creating this masterpiece, considering the tremendous effort required to design each creature, boss, story, and map to be entirely different and unique. I personally spend quite some time editing videos for you all, around three to four days, and it's a lot of work. Now imagine the dedication of the From Software team. Although they are professionals, their work and legacy are truly remarkable. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to support and motivate me to continue creating content for you. As the channel grows, so will the quality and frequency of the videos. Your support is greatly appreciated. In the guidance of grace hold firm. There are many secret locations that you might easily overlook. In fact, even after achieving the Platinum Trophy and playing the game again recently, I discovered places I never knew existed and was truly surprised that I had missed them before. That's why I recommend seeking out guides and tips from the community when playing Elden Ring, as it will greatly enhance your overall experience. When I suggest looking for help online, I'm referring to gaining knowledge about the game itself, including builds, weapons, spells, enchantments, and everything else the game has to offer. This is what made my own experience with the game so incredible. The sheer number of ways to play the game is astonishing, and you can choose various roles, such as a mage, paladin, samurai, necromancer, and countless other possibilities. You can even create role-play characters inspired by anime. For instance, during my first playthrough, I created a character based on Guts from Berserk. In my second playthrough, I made a character inspired by Ichigo Kurosaki, Focusing on a build centered around bleeding and dexterity, the game felt completely different, almost like an entirely new experience. Earlier in the video when I said that the story isn't the main focus here, it doesn't mean that there's no story. In fact, Elden Ring's story and lore are magnificent and far more complex than many other games. However, it's told in an unconventional way, as is common with Souls-like games. The story isn't presented in a traditional manner, 
Instead, it's told through text, item descriptions, and quest dialogue, like in Rani's or Alexander's quests, which unlock different endings and reveal more about the game's overall story. This game even has multiple endings, and I'm sure you'll discover each one, as I know you'll become addicted and find all of them. And this game is so incredible that, for instance, there's a ruin on the giant's mountain, where upon arrival you encounter a living jar of water lamenting the search for its sister. It mentions waiting for them to see the stars together. If you spoke with Roderica, the girl with the hood, at the beginning of the game, you likely received this living jar of water. Its description reveals that its name is Aurelia. If you pay close attention, you'll realize that Aurelia is the sister the living jar of water has been waiting for. If you place Aurelia near her sister, they will finally be able to see the stars together. Just behind this ruin, there's a cemetery with two prominent graves, those of the living jars of water, which explain why they were never able to see the stars together. It truly touches the heart and demonstrates the level of detail put into Elden Ring. We mustn't forget to discuss the main aspect of the game, the bosses. With over 230 bosses in total, including 13 main bosses and the rest being optional, we can't cover them all in this video. However, if you'd like, I can make a separate video focusing exclusively on the bosses. To keep this video more concise and dynamic, I'll discuss the five bosses that left the most significant impression on me. Starting with the Apostle of the Divine Skin, I'm not sure what happened that day. Perhaps I was slightly overleveled, or maybe I was just unlucky, but it took me four hours to defeat him. He possesses various weapons and different attacks, including both long-range and close-quarters combat. As mentioned earlier, I was playing with a pure strength build based on guts, so I had to confront him head-on. The Apostle of the Radon Tower truly tormented me. The fourth boss was the Fire Giant, who's literally an aberration. He covers the entire game map, deals one-hit kill damage, and is difficult to escape from. You need to attack him while dealing minimal damage to make any progress. And when he enters his second phase, things become extremely difficult. He starts throwing fireballs that relentlessly pursue you, and if you get too close, it's an instant kill. The next boss on the list is Malaketh himself. When you begin the fight, he's concealed and toying with you, which is already somewhat frustrating. But when he stops and becomes the Blade of Death once again, transforming into Malaketh, you're in for a tough battle. He's a relentless boss who constantly evades and clings to walls while hurling attacks that drain your health. In my opinion, he's more aggressive than Godfrey. Due to his lifesteal and aggressiveness, he became one of the most difficult bosses in Elden Ring for me. The second most difficult boss for me was Radagon, as he completely negates any non-physical damage. This was already quite a challenge, but the main issue is that after enduring his onslaught and believing you finally defeated him, his second phase begins, revealing the pristine beast. This made the fight quite a hassle for me, as you suffer greatly at his hands, and just when you think it's over, the second phase starts. And the first boss that I found most difficult and frightening was, obviously, Melania, Blade of Michaela. Melania holds a special place for me, as she is considered by many, including myself, to be the most difficult boss in all Souls-like games. This is not only due to her ability to recover health when she hits you, but also because of her unpredictable moveset. You need to dodge with precision, or else you'll fail. She is extremely difficult and aggressive, and in my opinion, she's the most beautiful character in video game history. But after enduring the struggle of defeating her, the second phase begins, which is even worse. She becomes faster, more aggressive, deals more damage, and gains the ability to throw a shadow-like projection at you. She also transforms into that scarlet rot butterfly, not to mention her unforgettable catchphrase that remains in the minds of those who've played the game. So, that's what I had to say about this incredible game that I love so much. The legacy it leaves behind is immense, and it won't be easily surpassed by any other game. But anyway, this was the video, and I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. This video took a lot of effort to create, so if you could support it, I would truly appreciate it. See you in the next one.